Hello, and welcome to the show Gold Squadron Gaze. It's the podcast where two Star Wars loving gays break down each episode of their favorite Star Wars TV shows while also being gay as hell. I'm your host, Bradley Brower. I'm your other host, Charles Rogers, and Bradley completely forgot uh, that there's an intro he's supposed to do. He just dumped right into it, just dodged <laughs> straight in there, uh, rather like Anakin Skywalker a lot of the time. Uh, how, are, how are you doing, Bradley? Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we've checked in with you. I know, I'm, I'm back. I'm back for of the moment. Tentatively, you have stuck, stuck <laughs> your head back in to the podcast. That's right. Uh, yeah, I have been doing, we took a week off. Because I had to prep for Legends Con, and then we had two episodes come out with guests, but you were not on them. No, uh, I have no idea what happened in that time. It's not like I even listened to them. I didn't edit them at all. I just kind of went for it. It's, it's yeah, it's not like, uh, you know, Bradley edits the show or anything. Right. <laughs> I definitely, with all of my time that I have to sit in front of a computer at work, definitely was the one who edited the show. For and sure. I did not wait until this morning to QA Death Star because I was so busy and it's supposed to come out tomorrow. <laughs> right. Today has been, oof. Today has been a lot. Today has been a lot from the moment I got up because I also recorded um, It May or May Not Be Out or it may be coming out later this week. Uh, We are doing a special for Light and Dice. We did it as a one shot. Listeners will hear it in two or three part. Uh, But we recorded that this morning and now I am here. With Bradley, who's is that, still is alive. That a hol- is that going to be a holiday special? Are you guys ever going to It is going to be like a that? Halloween special. Okay. I don't, I I don't like, want to say what it is. Got it. Yeah. No, don't, no spoilers, but I like no the spoilers. idea that you're doing a holiday special. We for- are doing a little holiday <laughs> special in between seasons. <laughs> I love that. Um, so definitely check that out. Uh, but we have Bradley back with us. We are continuing to talk about not the visual media because there are still strikes ongoing, particularly the SAG after strike, but also the WGA strike is still ongoing. Uh, So Bradley's back to talk about another book. Bradley, what are we talking about today? What what book did you finish finally? I finally, finally <laughs> finished. Uh, In only Bradley. the length of time the Clone Wars took. Right, which was what, three years? So there you go. Three I years, did... depending on who you ask. There are some people <laughs> who will vehemently deny the fact that it took three years. I like that. Sorry, what book, what book are we covering today, Bradley? Brotherhood. Brotherhood. Bradley, would you like some additional information on the novel Brotherhood? Yes. So, Brotherhood, the novel by Mike Chen, not to be confused with Brotherhood, the short story by Mike Chen in the From a Certain Point of View Return of the Jedi anthology that made me bawl like a baby over Anakin fucking Skywalker, is a novel that was published by Del Rey on May the 10th, 2022. Uh, So, it's about a year old. It's a little, a little year and a half ish old. There is an audiobook. We'll get to that in a second. First, I want to bring up Mike Chen. Uh, Mike Chen hasn't written a lot for Star Wars. He wrote the short story Disturbance from a certain point of view, The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, which was about Darth Sidious. He wrote this novel we're going to talk about today, Brotherhood. And then he also, not listed on Wikipedia yet, but I promise you it's there, also wrote a short story, Brotherhood, which is kind of a sequel to this book, and also Matthew Stover's 2005 novel, Revenge of the Sith. So that is who Mike Chen is. But outside of Star Wars, he has written a few original books uh, here and now and then in 2019. And We Could Be Heroes, a novel in 2021, a beginning at the end, a novel 2022 a couple of others uh, a good chunk of star trek books he started writing star wars and star trek uh, and he's written more trek books than star wars uh, but he's written by my count one two three four five five star trek books uh, so that's who mike chen is there is an audiobook it is narrated by jonathan davis now you have heard the name jonathan davis before a lot. Jonathan Davis has read a fuckload of Star Wars books. Uh, for our purposes, uh, we are concerned with, he read the unabridged edition of the Revenge of the Sith novelization, and he also read Outbound Flight, 
which will become relevant here in a couple of weeks. But he's read a bunch of canon and legends books. I forgot to mention, he's also in all four of the audio dramas. So in oh. Dooku Jedi Lost, he's Qui-Gon Jinn. I was in just about to say that, okay. In Dr. Aphra, he's a Boba Fett. In the High Republic Tempest Runner, he's Andrit Keller and Asgar Rowe. And in the Battle for Jedha, or Battle of Jedha, he's Parali. That's who that is. Bradley, what did you think of the novel Brotherhood by Mike Chen? I thought it was a novel by Mike (laughs) Chen. Uh, Congratulations. You did correctly uh, identify that. I don't know what it is. Maybe, maybe I am just a sexist, but I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't like men writing my Star Wars books. I think that's what it is. (laughs) I think, I think, I think only the women are allowed to write my Star Wars books because they're the only ones that I trust at this point. Excuse Um, me, you, you liked Thrawn. You liked Timothy Zahn. True. I think that's a very, you liked Kevin Scott writing Dooku Jedi Lost. True. Those are, I think those are very specific cases. I don't know what it is. Sorry, Mike Chen. I mean, generally, um, I don't think men should be uh, allowed to do <laughs> things. But there are a few exceptions, you know. Yeah. No, I, okay. Timothy John, Let's Kevin see. Scott, and Charles Soule. What did I like? Also, Daniel I... Jose Older. You, we've got to get you reading a Daniel Jose Older. You would fucking love Daniel Jose Older's work. Well, let's let's focus on what I would like. Uh, so, I, I like... I like that uh, Ventress was in this novel. I like that she, you know, was in it. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> She's there. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't know. I, something about this. I don't know if it was just the the timing of us getting to this book. You know, I'm just kind of like working or maybe that's there's this outside factors or something. But I don't know. I just didn't love this novel. Maybe it was because it was Anakin Kenobi focused or something. Um, I, I don't mind the the movie characters being like the focus of all these books sometimes, but sometimes I like a break from a character, maybe that we don't really get a lot of focus on. And that's kind of like what I gravitate towards more. So, I mean, there's hella, you know, Anakin content out there. It's not like, you know, it's like we have enough of that, you know, um, there's plenty of Kenobi content. I mean, you know, obviously. So stuff like that. I, that's why I like Phasma. That's why, I like, you know, I like taking those characters where we're not really focusing too much on them and giving them their whole, basically a whole novel based on them. That's why I like Inquisitor Rise of the Red you know, it was just some random character that got a whole ass book. Uh, I like that stuff. So this one felt a little like, I feel like this one felt a little too much like a Clone Wars episode or like a Clone Wars arc. Like it was just like, I feel like I've seen it, you know, like I feel like I read this already, even though I know I didn't, obviously. But it just felt like I already knew this story as I was going through it. Or like I knew where it was going. Like I was just kind of like, this, this, there's no surprises here. I'm not shocked by any of the twists and turns. Like it, it was just a little, for me, it was just a little boring. And I don't know if that was just because of, like I said, outside forces. But I don't even think Asajj could have saved this now. Yeah, I'm similar in a more positive light. I, I liked it, but I didn't love it. I I respected it for what it was doing. It was a book that was written. It was written, uh, it came out very close to the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Mm. So it's part of this wave of books. We had Brotherhood. We had Padawan. Uh, we had uh, the Obi-Wan Kenobi comics. So we had a lot of Obi-Wan Kenobi com- content coming out. Got it. And similarly to how we talked about how certain novels are written for an express purpose, purpose. This one was written very much for the purpose of filling in a gap in time we had not gotten to explore before, which is the early, early Clone Wars, like the very start of the Clone Wars, because most media will pick up after the Battle of uh, Christophsis, which is the sort of beginning of Actually, Rookies technically is the beginning of the Clone Wars story, but most stories will be set after the Battle of Christophsis, which is about a year or year and a half into the Clone Wars. And this one being set very early into the Clone Wars is trying to explore stuff, sort of fill in those gaps. And I respect it for doing that. I don't think it does anything more than that. I think it does exactly what it set out to do, which is answer some lingering questions that we have about the Clone Wars. What happened on on Cato Nemoidia mainly is being the big question, but also like, when did Anakin and Obi-Wan meet Asajj Ventress? Like, how do they already right. know who she is in Christophsis? And this book finally provides us a canon answer as to at least when Kenobi and Ventress met. Although the book seems to imply that the events of the Gendi Tartakovsky series happened. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because like I, in my head canon... That's like, that's it. Like, because I haven't, I don't have any other 
frame of reference of how they met. So well, that, I, that my actually brain, is that's it. So the way Mike Chen, Mike Chen did a tweet, and I'm I'm paraphrasing it because I'm remembering tr- trying to remember it. I don't have the actual tweet in front of me. Uh, but something Mike Chen said was that he he thought of it as happening, but not like in the same form as we see in the Gendy Tartakovsky series. That it happened, and the series was like an exaggerated version of it. And but things like Anakin recognizing the Fanblade Starfighter uh, that. And he, Mike Chen also made the point that like Ventress would have known who Anakin was, but Anakin really has no idea in the course of the fight on Yavin 4 who Ventress is. So it's entirely possible that they fought on Yavin 4 and she knew who he was, but he had no idea that it was her. So, and I believe there's also some stuff that's, that's mentioned in there. Mike Chen actually does have a lot of connections to other things. I'm just looking at relations to previous stories. There's a great scene very early in the Revenge of the Sith novel that talks about going to a system with a dead star. He brings that scene back into canon and retells it from Obi-Wan Kenobi's point of view. And then there's just some other stuff in there that mostly the Clone Wars stuff that ties in. According to Wikipedia, there's also a bunch of contradictions, but I don't care. (laughs) It's all minor stuff. So I actually don't care whatsoever about that. Um, I mean, that still doesn't ev- matter to me. Yeah, I don't care. Sorry to everyone who expected me to freak out that uh, <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi and Padme Amidala not having seen each other since Geonosis is be contradicted by Star Wars, my first comic journey to danger. But I'm not going to I'm not going to blow a gasket about that one. But I, I, I liked the book well enough. But yeah, I'm not about to go on and evangelize for this one. I think this one's fine. If you like the Clone Wars, you will like this book. Yeah. Like I said, it just felt like a Clone Wars arc. Like it just, it, like a, just, a, it felt like an early season of Clone Wars that we just haven't seen because like it, maybe it was on the cutting room floor somewhere. Like it was just like, oh, they forgot to do it. <laughs> so. One one thing that I did like that Mike Chen did though, and I do want to bring it up here because I thought it was really cool. The Nemoidians are kind of one note and shitty in the prequels yes. and the Clone Wars. And the one thing he does that's, like, super revolutionary and, like, every time it would come up, I'd be like, oh, no, this, this is what I want, uh, was he tries to give the Nemoidians more depth, particularly through uh, the character of Rug, who is the older, like, Rug Kornum. Do you also have that name pulled up? Or did yeah, you just because, remember it? No, because I was it was gonna be hard for me to remember that name. So I, I was just like <laughs> Yeah, it's it's Rude Cornum who's the Nemoidian like guard captain during the book, and then also Ketanor, who's a guardsman that's being like radicalized by Asajj Ventress. And like they're doing this whole narrative about how like radicalization can happen, particularly when you're from a group that's been unfairly treated or you perceive as being unfairly treated historically. And like, okay, all that's really interesting. That stuff I really did like. I thought that was, the Nemoidians have always rubbed me wrong. So it's very nice that they've gotten a little bit of more depth in this book. No, I liked it a lot because I felt like, uh, at least with the Rube character, I saw her as like a very like James Bondy kind of character almost. Like, so I like the idea that there's this like Nemoidian character who doesn't have anything to do with you know, government and stuff that's like running around doing kind of shit. I kind of like that. I also liked, uh, what was it? Uh, what's her name? Uh, Mill Alabeth. Yeah, um, the the little little Padawan. Little Padawan, yeah. Little Padawan or youngling? Is she a youngling or a Padawan? I think she's a youngling. I think she's a youngling because she's youngling not... was following Anakin around, <laughs> right. which it was, was just, great. Who's just like, hey, let me come along for the ride. This book is very much like. This is a common refrain you're going to hear from me in the coming weeks. I liked individual bits of this book a lot. I loved individual bits of this book a lot. Stepping back and viewing the whole, I wasn't as enthused by it. Like, the first time uh, Obi-Wan and Ventress meet, I thought was beautiful when they're having to have this conversation. So, like, individual moments, I liked a lot. Uh, It's just the book overall, I wasn't. I wasn't about to go out and start preaching in the streets about it the way I am about the Revenge of the Sith novelization or Black Spire or right. some of the Light of the Jedi or some of the others that we've covered. Right, because I think I don't think this one did the same thing that some of those other books did, which was like more like character kind of study. This is not really that. This is actually telling like a little blip in the the canonical lives of, you know, Anakin and Obi-Wan. And we already know their characters. We know their character arcs. We know like, you know, their 
changes and things that they're going to do. So I, I don't think this book necessarily like took them anywhere new. Um, maybe a little bit with Anakin because it kind of the stuff when they were talking about Anakin was kind of more like with um, with Mill in the end. Kenobi was like, oh, you've matured, you know, you're acting more like a Jedi Knight than an actual, you know, Padawan or whatever. So stuff like that. Maybe a little bit with Anakin, but other than that, I mean, like you know, Kenobi doesn't change like any at any point in time in this whole entire novel. Not a like, not a substantial like right. Like there there really is not much of a journey that Obi Wan has to go on to get from the end of Attack of the Clones to the beginning of the Clone Wars series. Most of his character journey is going to happen over the course of the Clone Wars series. Uh, but he's also he's very much he's not a character that moves a whole lot. And then the Anakin stuff, I did like. I liked how we got some time with him and Padme. That is I really like, liked yeah. that a lot. Mike Chen, who wrote the book, actually was writing the book at the same time E.K. Johnson was writing Queen's Hope, which was okay. the third Queen's novel. Right. Uh, and the two novels do actually reference each other and actually share a surprising character uh, who is created for Queen's Hope and gets a cameo in Brotherhood, which is the character of Sister, uh, the oh, trans woman okay. clone. Okay, we've got to talk about this because when I read this, okay, okay, this is a good time to talk about this because I was going to bring it up, but I was I like, I got to talk about Sister. I fucking love Sister. I was genuinely confused when I was listening because I, I obviously listened to this on the audiobook. And I thought when they started referring to the clone as she, I was like, what are they talking about? I was like, I was so confused because I wasn't really paying attention quite right. I had to rewind it a little bit because I was like, what did they just say? Like, did I hear that right? Yeah, most of us book readers already knew who Sister was was because she gets introduced in queen's hope uh when we're not we're not going to cover the queen's books um right they would not be fair to them they are not books that were written for gay men in their late 20s and early 30s so we're not going to cover them however she does first turn up in queen's hope so a lot of us who read queen's hope recognized her immediately from that um, and i was like oh that's really cool that she also gets to be here She's such a fascinating concept for a character. Yeah, I was not expecting, first of all, I was not expecting her to show up at all uh, or in, at any form, at any time, in any novel, because I didn't I didn't even know she existed. And I didn't even know the concept existed. Uh, so that's why I was like, oh, this is surprising. Absolutely rad. Yeah, I loved, I, I loved that. More, more stories with Sister, please. She's such an interesting character that's only really briefly been touched on. And... And I kind of like that they're moving away from telling Clone Wars stories, but at the same time, right. like there is some stuff you can go back and fill in or or span off. This was a huge galaxy spanning conflict. There's right. many clone troopers. There's thousands of planets that were involved in the Clone Wars. You could tell some of these stories, and one of the stories that they should tell is Sister. Sister I and think that'd Bill, be a great I think, story. are the two people that are in Brotherhood that I most want to see more of what happens to them. I agree, because I feel like with at least the Sister one, I could definitely see a whole ass novel on that that definitely could happen and then with mill i'm i am curious to see where her story is going to go since she's like she was so kind of against the whole you know violence and being a jedi thing and i was like where where is she going with that like where's her story going so yeah it's this is the thing is is mike chin has created some really interesting characters here i was i was a little sad that mill didn't show up in from a certain point of view return of the jedi uh to explain what happened to her However, Mike Chen's story in From a Certain Point of View, Return of the Jedi was so good, it made me openly weep. So, like, maybe we just leave that story alone as it is. I do recommend pairing both Brotherhood, the novel, and Brotherhood, the short story, up with the Revenge of the Sith novel from Legends. I mentioned this on our our Revenge, I say our, my Revenge of the Sith episode with Andy (laughs) that I recorded that I think that they work really well together. Andy suggested doing, it was Labyrinth of Evil, and then one more after. I cannot remember what the third book they said was to sort of form a Revenge of the Sith trilogy. It wasn't Dark Lord, The Rise of Darth Vader. It was a different one. I would recommend a slightly different one if you can kind of jerk your head out of the everything needs to perfectly match, and you just want, like, the Anakin and Obi-Wan experience. It would be Brotherhood, the novel, and then Revenge of the Sith novel, and then the Brotherhood short story from Fakpov. Because this novel, even though it is treading ground that has been trod to death, it is doing it relatively well. Like, if you like Obi-Wan and Anakin content, you will like this book. I just don't think either Bradley or I really necessarily wanted that story. Yeah, I I think it could have served better. Honestly, 
funny enough, this story, if you had taken Anakin and Kenobi out of this story and replaced them with two new Jedis or maybe something like just totally fresh new characters, this would have been a more interesting story to me, I think. If, if That's that a makes hot sense. take. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, e- or, or even like... Or maybe I characters hate, we know, but we I hate to a say, lot of. I hate to say little more of the Anakin, but Anakin was the one who got the really interesting stuff I felt. True. And Kenobi... Kenobi, like, as a character in this, I didn't, like, really, I didn't remember, like, anything that he did that was particularly notable, like, as far as a character change. Like, Rug goes through, Rug and Ketar go through the, like, big emotional stuff on the Nemoidian side. Right. They're the ones that are doing that. I don't want to say, like, he's a flat character because he's not interesting. He's funny. He's reconciling his sudden elevation to mastership. Uh, and Anakin's sudden elevation to knighthood. Uh, like, that's all in there, but it it just didn't hit for me in a yeah. way that, like, maybe it should have. Yeah, and I feel like, actually, you know what's funny is? If you had taken or shrunk Kenobi's role down slightly and then had maybe Padme have perspective in this book a little bit more because of her history with Nemoidians, I feel like that maybe would be a better story to tell. Like cause That she's... is covered very extensively. We're not going to cover the Queen's books, uh, okay. and I don't really like the first two super, super hard. The third one, Queen's Hope, which was written in tandem with this, does deal with her relationship uh, with the Nemoidians. Got it. Okay. Uh, so that one's off in its own little book. So it's there. The it's, story's it's there. there. It's the story's there. You can okay. go find it. Understood. That makes sense. Because I felt like that was what was missing from this story. So maybe that, maybe if I were to just read that companion, that book is like a companion novel kind of thing, maybe it would just enhance this story a little it, bit. It would give, I think, kind of a completed view of, of our three main characters going into the Clone Wars, because I do feel like you're right when you identify this as sort of a missing arc, because the Clone Wars is, I mean, the Clone Wars is Anakin's story told through Ahsoka and Rex's lens, right? but it really starts when Ahsoka shows up. And so it it did feel like there was stuff missing. I'm kind of on, I'll keep saying it over and over again, because, you know, it's my opinion on this. I am glad that this book exists. It, I'm glad this gap has been filled in. Right. I I'm not about to go around evangelizing, preaching about this book. Like it's right. just not that kind of book for me. And I also kind of think that Asajj, even though she's in this book, I I want more from her. Like I felt like she didn't have much to do other than whisper in that guy's ear a little bit. And I was like, I kind of need her to have more to do. Like I get what she's is going on. Like in the, it's going on in the background, and they are implying a lot of stuff. But it's like I needed to get more of her perspective on what was happening, like what her plans were. You know, air quotes. She's there to be evil. <laughs> I know, the but I <laughs> she's so much more complicated. Bad guy in the story it's also weird yeah i was reading it and i was like see i'm remembering complicated asajj from later in the clone wars and no we're dealing with a badass lady villain asajj from the first two and a half seasons right and it's like oh this is weird okay but not in the way of like dooku jedi lost where dooku jedi lost you felt like we were in an earlier iteration of asajj's development and this one just feels like we're doing season one asajj ventress which I do like, but I know she's more complicated than that. Well, Bradley, um, this is kind of going to be a short one, mostly because I've been talking all day. <laughs> do you have anything else from this book that you wanted to mention, or do you want to just go straight into final thoughts? Let's just do final thoughts, because I think I, I also want to talk about maybe what future books I should read, too. So maybe that'll help extend this a little bit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, Bradley, what were your final thoughts on Brotherhood? So my final thoughts are, it was a novel that was good. It was okay. Um, I Like I said, I think that the story is good, and especially like you said, if you like Kenobi and Anakin's stuff. I think Anakin's stuff was better, like you said, especially with the Padme scenes. I think I, I do like whenever novels or other things expand upon their relationship more, because with the movies, it's just kind of like, oh, I love her. And that's it. It's not like, oh, we're going on dates. We're actually like a couple. We've been married. We're gonna for fuck over in the back year. of an open speeder. Like, yes, yeah, stuff like that. Like <laughs> we need more of that content because it makes their it makes Anakin losing her in that arc more probable. It makes more sense. Like it just like instead of just, oh, I was in love with her when I was six. Like it's no, uh, we 
are married. We have an actual relationship. We love each other. We we are always with each other. You know, we secretly are in love <laughs> all the time. And like that stuff, like we don't get enough of that. And so just the little scenes that they even put in this book of them just at dinner together. You know what I mean? Like that's like a fucking great addition. And that's they, I think we need more stuff like that. If they're going to do Anakin Padme content, we need more real life stuff from them. Because other than that, I, I mean, the only thing that I've ever seen is that where they fuck in the Tartakovsky show. So <laughs> that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, it's a little bit in the Clone Wars and then Queen's uh, Queen's Hope. Again, there's a little bit of the, gotcha. the content in there. But for the most part, yeah, that's another one. My final thought is I think Mike Chin is a good writer. I Obviously, he made me cry. But I think he's doing an, a, an excellent job with the material that he's trying to work with. I don't think it was ever going to rise above the level of good just be based on the material that this book was inevitably going to be about. And so I think he, he did an excellent job with that. I think the book is worth reading, particularly if you like the Clone Wars. If you love the Clone Wars and you want more Clone Wars, this book is basically just more Clone Wars. It, it's the missing prologue to the Clone Wars TV show. But other than that, like, there wasn't a whole lot overall about this book that I was like, mm, this is amazing, the best thing ever. This is so incredible. I was like, it's good. It's it's basically good. And I, I do recommend it, but maybe not to everybody. And that's my that's my final thought on that. Um, so let's talk about where, where we're going with this because there's no end in sight to the strikes. Right. Yeah. So um, give, give me some more books to read so continues. I can backlog some stuff. There continues. <laughs> so we're going to handle a couple of things next week, ideally, fingers crossed. I have finally found someone who has actually read Outbound Flight. Oh, okay. So we are going to do an episode on the novel Outbound Flight by Timothy Zahn. By we, I mean me, because Bradley is continuing to work on stuff. You're about to have a very fun week ahead yeah. of you. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Good luck with that. When we are done with Outbound, when I am done with Outbound Flight, at some point we are we are trying to get the audio recording of my panel at Legends uh, in order to release it as an episode. Uh, it's just a technical matter of getting that, getting that file. Uh, right. And then, Bradley, we got to do something really exciting. Because we're going to pivot again. Gosh. We're going to dick away again. Uh, we're going to spend a couple of weeks. I don't know how many weeks, but we're going to spend a couple of weeks covering the Darth Vader 2017 run by Charles Soule. So if you listened to our Inquisitor Rise of the Red Blade episode and you thought Bradley needs more Inquisitor content in his life, wonderful news i talked him into reading the darth vader comics so we will be doing those for an indeterminate period of time however if you have other recommendations for books that we have not covered that are not the high republic that bradley can read uh because the high republic i have segmented off to the side but any books that you think bradley should read and we should cover on the show you can contact us at the socials that we are going to provide at the end clip of this episode. Isn't that right, Bradley? That's correct. They can find us on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter. And we have an email address where you can send feedback. And you can find me out in the ether, floating aimlessly like AP5 from Star Wars Rebels, singing to flying space creatures. <laughs> Bradley's face as I'm doing this whole bit, uh, it's incredible. He's he's so what's the word? Bewildered? Are you bewildered right now, Bradley? Uh, I don't know. I don't really think that's a word that would describe what I'm doing. Anyway, that is a plan. Outbound flight. We're trying to get uh, the panel set up to release that as an episode, and then we will be doing Darth Vader 2017 for a few weeks. Send Bradley book recommendations. Okay, run the socials. Bye. Thank you for listening to Gold Squadron Gaze. Did Charles fuck something up? Send us a message at goldsquadrongaze at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at Gold Squad Gaze. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Gold Squadron Gaze. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Gold Squadron Gaze, where we post the podcast as well as exclusive content. Please join us next week and every week for more of Gold Squadron Gaze. 